in this video, I'm going to look at 10 top 10 impacts that is going to happen to the Cardano ecosystem because of the launch of Midnight and also Bitcoin DeFi. These things I think are going to make a big impact on the chain, increase activity and hopefully also increase the price of ADA. So let's get into it. Hey everyone, I'm Peter. If it's your first time here, thumbs up, like, subscribe, notification bell. But we are at the cusp of something absolutely huge for the Cardano ecosystem. And I'll explain exactly why. Firstly, we have the Midnight team launching their chain and the tie-in with Cardano is massive. And let me just play you this clip here uh, about the dependency of Midnight on Cardano. A lot of people are thinking, hey, IOG are launching this brand new chain and they are going to abandon Cardano. Not quite. This ties into Cardano very deeply. So let me just play you this clip. Midnight can't operate without the ADA network confirmations. Yes, that's correct. Because the stake will operate. Well, it's an independent chain, but the governance set, the set of people actually validating the blocks on the Midnight network are the SPOs from Cardano. So if Cardano goes down, Midnight goes down. So there you go. So Midnight can't operate without the Cardano blockchain. There's a lot of tie-ins there. And if you have a look at the latest white paper that was released as well, there's a lot of incentives for Cardano state pool operators there to tie in with the smart contracts and then also distribute rewards to their delegates in the Cardano ecosystem. So there's a lot of tie-ins there. Cardano isn't going away because of Midnight. And because of all these tie-ins, it's going to have a big impact. The other thing that we're seeing a large impact from is Bitcoin OS and of course the IOG's version of this Bitcoin integration, their cardinal white paper and how they're going to be wrapping in Bitcoin over to the Cardano ecosystem and bring over more liquidity and uh, possible DeFi opportunities there too. So we've got two projects that are delivering and bring in Bitcoin liquidity but then also Midnight connecting all of these other chains over to the Cardano ecosystem uh, probably for the first time. So we're going to see a massive amount of impact there. So let's go through my top 10 impacts on Cardano because of Midnight and Bitcoin DeFi. So first off, number one, massive liquidity injections. And I think this is quite obvious because firstly, Bitcoin holders uh, will be looking for those DeFi opportunities and moving Bitcoin over to the Cardano ecosystem without selling it. So that's a really good incentive there for them. They can start participating in DeFi, borrowing lending protocols, uh, perpetuals, all sorts of things. So there's a lot of opportunities there for Bitcoin holders. On the other side with Midnight, they're going to have a lot of liquidity coming in because people need to start moving those Night tokens out of their Cardano wallets. Because the Night tokens are going to be deposited into Cardano addresses, uh, people are going to look for other opportunities within the ecosystem to something to do with their Night tokens possibly sell it, move it, stake it, whatever it might be. So there's a lot of possible injections of liquidity because of those two factors. The second thing here, Night Token will trigger ADA fueled activity. Yes, like I just mentioned, because there are these DeFi opportunities on Cardano, all the DEXs and borrowing lending protocols may start looking into using the Night Token as collateral or setting up liquidity pools with additional rewards on there. So if they're trying to attract the users in, we're going to see more activity in that respect. So if you are, for example, looking to provide liquidity on a DEX, you usually pair it up with a stablecoin or ADA. And if that's the case, then users maybe bring in extra liquidity from other chains to make that happen. They also may be looking at uh, providing collateral on various DeFi protocols, uh, borrowing lending protocols, uh, to earn some extra rewards there too. So lots of opportunities and all that will require more ADA to fuel that activity because you do have to pay for those transaction costs. So that most likely will be paid in ADA. Now, the third thing here is the adoption and increased usage of Babel fees within the ecosystem. So Babel fees allow users to uh, have transactions on Cardano, but without using ADA as that transaction fee. They could use Knight, for example. And that's really desirable because it means that the user doesn't need to bring in extra ADA into their wallet to be able to use the platform. They can use and pay for the transactions using the Knight token. So this is kind of the opposite of uh, Knight uh, 0.2 here, where Knight will trigger uh, extra ADA into the ecosystem to pay for those fees. 
In this case, they'll be paying the fees in Knight tokens, but of course that is paid for with ADA from other means and mechanisms within the Babel fee um, conversions. So that is something that we'll see a lot more of to make that user experience better. Now there are there is Aquarium, which is already implemented, but then also FISA by M Labs, which is coming in as well. And that's all managed by smart contracts too. So we have lots of interesting implementations of Babel fees, and we're going to see the greater adoption of that really soon. Point number four here is the increased participation in staking. And this isn't just staking ADA, but then also staking uh, the Knight tokens or Bitcoin within the ecosystem. So there will be more opportunities for this. I noticed with a lot of my videos lately that I've been putting out, people are saying, hey, I've got ADA in my wallet here. I've had it for ages in my hardware wallet, but I'm not staking it. Am I eligible for this particular Glacier airdrop? And I'm thinking, hmm, it's, it's kind of strange that you have a huge amount of ADA and not staking, but hopefully this will activate a lot of users out there and encourage them to actually stake and participate within the ecosystem. If you're holding a large amount of ADA, which some of these users state that they have and have been since the, the early launch, uh, but they've never staked it. And they're missing out on all these staking rewards since uh, 2018 or 2020 when staking started to now, they've could have had hundreds, hundreds of thousands more ADA in their wallet, uh, you know, if, if they're holding millions of ADA. So that could very well be the case. So hopefully this triggers the adoption of staking within the platform if uh, people aren't already staking. But hopefully we also see the increased staking of Bitcoin and also of Knight tokens within the ecosystem because that will also help increase the TVL overall of staked assets in the Cardano blockchain. Now point five here is all around self-custody of assets. In the videos that I've been creating lately, I seeing a lot of people simply holding those assets on exchange. So hopefully this means and makes people aware that there are a lot of opportunities if they start moving some assets over to self-custody wallets on the Cardano blockchain itself. So hopefully we do see this increase over time uh, because if it's not your keys, it's not your crypto. That's the old saying there. And, uh, and from what I'm seeing in the comments and uh, what people are saying on X, a lot of these exchanges out there, such as Coinbase, won't be participating in the claiming of the Knight tokens. And as a result, anyone that had the ADA staked on Coinbase, for example, won't be getting the Knight tokens. That's what I'm hearing at the moment. Maybe they'll change their mind in the future. But hopefully this will encourage more people to actually stake within the Cardano ecosystem and take self-custody of those assets. Point number six here is the wallet numbers skyrocketing. And this is really good. You've seen in other chains, they use the wallet metric as some way to measure the amount of users that are on their chain. And with the midnight airdrop, the Glacier drop, every user out there is encouraged to use and create a brand new wallet, a sub account or a wallet that has no transaction history. And because of that, we will see a lot more wallets created for receiving this particular airdrop. It's estimated that there's possibly 37 million users out there uh, that would potentially create new wallets for receiving the night tokens. And if they get even a fraction of that, we can see a massive increase of wallet numbers on the chain itself. So that's something pretty exciting. But we'll also see this from the Bitcoin DeFi perspective as well. So as users start moving assets over from the Bitcoin ecosystem over to Cardano, we'll see wallets being created to participate within the DeFi ecosystem. So either option here, Midnight or Bitcoin, we'll see the increase of wallets within the ecosystem. So that is something really exciting to see too. Point number seven here is DEX volume exploding. And this is very true because a lot of users, when they come over to the Cardano ecosystem, they may be bringing some assets over such as stable coins, or they're simply playing around with the Knight token and they want to sell it for ADA or for a stable coin. And if that's the case, then we're going to see a lot of activity on all the DEXs and DEX aggregators out there as people look for ways to exit out of night if they're looking for a quick win there or if they're bringing in assets and looking for uh, other ways to participate within the ecosystem. For example, your users might be in the ecosystem claiming their night tokens, but then swapping it directly for SNEC. And if that's the case, there's going to be a lot of activity on these DEXs. So it's definitely a metric that I'm pretty excited to see. 
Point number eight here is the fee pressure and network congestion. Net, now, normally network congestion is a bad thing, but there are a lot of implementations at the moment to really scale up those transactions. And the fee pressure itself is good for any of the state pool operators out there because those fees are collected and distributed to the state pools out there that uh, confirm all the blocks within the chain. So overall, more activity, more fees on the chain is a good thing. So we'll see a lot more activity with the introduction of Midnight and Bitcoin DeFi. Point number nine here is the increased usage of L2s. We have two awesome solutions. We have Mithril and Hydra that will help scale up Cardano's transaction layer to the millions per second. And we've seen this with the Hydra Doom uh, demo, and we saw millions of transactions per second pass through that. Of course, there's a lot of infrastructure that's needed behind it, and that will come with demand. We have really cool projects that are integrating in Hydra and some other ones that are implementing Mithril as well. So we will see Bitcoin DeFi actually participate on the L2s and as these other platforms such as Delta DeFi roll out their Hydra implementation of their DEX, we'll see a lot of activity on there as well. So there'll be a lot of trades going through that and then rolling it back to the Cardano ecosystem. So these L2s are definitely going to gain more popularity and usage and we're going to see a lot more uh, um, dApps, etc., implementing their Hydra solutions. So really cool thing to see here as well. Now, point number 10, this is probably an obvious one, and I'm seeing it in my comments already, people from different ecosystems interested in the midnight airdrop and Bitcoin DeFi coming into Cardano and exploring what's happening here. So we're going to have a lot of brand new newcomers coming in. And of course, we need to make them aware of various scams that maybe are coming around, educate them on how to use various Cardano DeFi protocols, and show them, uh, get basically give them a tour of what's available. There's a lot out there on the Cardano space. It's a growing and really exciting ecosystem. So hopefully you guys out there that have been in the Cardano space for a long time, um, show these guys and girls um, uh, what's really good and what's been cooking on the Cardano space. I know I cover a lot of things in my channel, and if you're interested in anything in the Cardano ecosystem, Make sure you hit that thumbs up, like, subscribe, notification bell, and I'll keep you guys up to date with everything that's happening there. But if you're also liking my content, um, I am also a Cardano DREP. You can delegate to my DREP ID. I vote on the various governance proposals out there and help break them down for you guys. So if you don't understand what's going on, at least you can check out what um, I've been um, looking into in regards to the governance um, actions. So that you can vote accordingly if you're voting for yourself. But if you want someone to vote on your behalf, you can delegate to my DREP profile. I've got the uh, DREP IDs down here, or you can connect your wallet and delegate directly from my website. And also, I want to do a big shout out to all my channel members as well. Um, you guys absolutely rock. Um, these are all my channel members here at the moment. I couldn't make these videos without you guys. If you're interested in supporting the work that I do, links down below to how uh, to learn how to become a member and help support my coffee addiction too. Now, the other thing that I've also got here is my Cardano state pool. So if you are wanting to support simply by delegating your ADA to a pool and earn some staking rewards, check out ADA Oz. That's the ticker there or the pool ID. You can find any of those on any of your Cardano wallets and start delegating your ADA and earning those staking rewards. And of course, if you're delegating your ADA, you will need to delegate to a DREP to be able to withdraw those rewards. So you can do those two things at the same time. The last thing I'll mention here is you can also listen to all of these podcast episodes. I do them all as YouTube videos, but if you are the type of person that listens to it in the car or on the, on, on the road, wherever you might be, you can listen to it on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. I think they close down Google Podcasts. Uh, but you know any of the popular audio podcast platforms out there, you can listen to the content I create there as well. All right, so there's a lot of things to go through there, but I'm pretty excited about what uh, Bitcoin, DeFi and Midnight have to bring to the Cardano ecosystem. I see a lot of growth and I see a lot of uh, potentially explosive growth within the Cardano ecosystem, thanks to these two big things moving into the space here. If you enjoyed my content, like I said, hit that thumbs up, like, subscribe, notification bell, lots of links and whatnot down in the show notes below. You can also check out my website, learncardano.io. I'll see you guys in the next video.